Hello everybody, welcome to Linda Wheeler Ground School. I'm a theory instructor and examiner over here in the UK and I run five day ground school courses for students to get their nine exams done. Nobody likes the theory part. I notice that students are really struggling with their CRP one flight computers or the CRP5. So today I'm gonna to take you through a complete flight plan. I'll do it nice and slowly. We'll be using all the parts of our computer and we'll go from a flight plan right from the beginning to the end. Okay, so we're gonna be introducing you to the, the flight computer here. We today are gonna to do conversions. We're gonna find out our true airspeed, our ground speed, headings, how much fuel we need, what time we're gonna get there, literally the whole caboodle for a flight plan. The flight computer is a little bit daunting. I know in this day and age, we tend to use electronic applications like Sky Demon, but when you're learning to fly, you have to know the basics of how to use the flight computer, and that's what we're gonna go through. And I hope this uh, video is useful for you. Okay, so we're gonna be looking at finding our true airspeed. We're gonna be looking at headings, ground speed, what time I'm gonna get there, and how much fuel I need. Before I can answer or do anything, first thing we need to know is our true airspeed. How do we work out our true airspeed today? Welcome to this part of your computer. It's a little daunting at first, but you will notice that round the outside here we have writing. We have kilometers, meters and liters. We have yards. We have specific gravity in pounds, imperial gallons, US gallons. We have feet. We have true airspeed, I have, well, we have nautical miles, statute miles, another specific gravity, but this one's in kilograms, which brings us all the way back to the top here. On the next row, we have numbers. This 90 or 95 are magic numbers because 95 could be 9.5, 950, 9,500, 95. I can make it anything I want it to be. It could be 95 gallons, 95 miles, 95 packets of crisps, whatever you want it to be, it can be. On the inside here, we have a scale that represents time. If I'm using it for time, I can use it as anything I want to use it for. But when I'm using it as time, this triangle here represents 60 minutes, 55 minutes, 50 minutes, going all the way around to seven minutes and back to an hour. If I'm going over the hour and I make that six, that seven, 70, I can just look on the inside and it tells me 70 minutes is one hour 10, 80 minutes is one hour 20. Remember, these numbers can be anything I want them to be. Finding our true airspeed. On the inside here, in the middle, we find our true airspeed. We have air temperature on the outside being plus 50 degrees, going down to zero degrees and on the right hand side being our minus going down to minus 80. It tells us pressure altitude is in thousands of feet. Again, in here I just put in what I know. Today the altitude we're going to fly at is 5,000 feet where the outside air temperature is minus 10 degrees and what I want to know is what my true airspeed is. My indicated airspeed is going to be 90 knots and I want to know what my true airspeed is. All we do, we're just detectives, we put into the flight computer what we actually know. I know today the altitude I'm going to fly at is 5,000 feet. So rotate the wheel down to 5,000 feet, make sure you don't go to 50,000 feet, which is a common mistake and I line it up with what I know. I know today at 5,000 feet, and I can't quite see very well because I'm blind as a bat, but at 5,000 feet, the outside air temperature is minus 10. All I do, I've put the clues in, all I do now is find my indicated airspeed on the inside. Remember that nine is a magic number, it could be nine or 90. And I read the outside. It tells you, you read true airspeed on the outside. I'm looking for a slightly higher number. So my true airspeed is going to be 95 knots. Fantastic, now I know my true airspeed is 95 knots. 
I can now work out my ground speed, my heading, given that today the wind is 030 degrees at 15 knots. The track, which is the line I want to follow on my chart, is 090 degrees. And I've now worked out my true airspeed is 95 knots. The distance being 115 nautical miles, my time of departure is 10 o'clock UTC, and my fuel burns 13 gallons an hour. To work out my heading, my time of arrival and my fuel, there's only one thing I have to know. I can't answer any of this question until I know my ground speed. Welcome to this part of your computer. We have a rotating wheel around the outside, being a compass heading, and we have speeds going up and down here, being 40 knots going up to 150 knots, and we have drift lines. Drift to the right of 10 degrees, a drift to the left of 10 degrees. Just note, below 100, every drift line is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Once we get above 100, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Again, to find your ground speed, there is only three things you have to do. Okay, so the first thing I say to myself is, what am I going to fly at today? I'm going to fly at 95 knots. You move, moving your, your, your plate, under the centre circle being 95 knots. So, I'm going to fly at 95 knots today. The next thing we do, always the wind comes first. Hmm, where is the wind coming from? The wind is coming from 0, 030 degrees. I put 0, 030 degrees under the index. And then I have to mark down the speed of the wind, the speed of the wind being 15 knots. From your true airspeed, we mark a dot down the line for 15 knots. Well, that's if I'm at 95, that's 5. So 10 is going to 15 is going to be at the 80. You make the smallest dot you can at 15 knots down from your true airspeed. The only thing I haven't done now is put in my track. Well, my track is 0, 090 degrees. If I now rotate the wheel to 0, 090 degrees you will notice that the dot has moved out to the right by nine degrees. What that's actually telling me is that if I fly that track with that wind, I will be blown to the right of my track by nine degrees. I don't want to be blown nine degrees to the right of track, so I have to rectify that. All you do now, if the dot is on the right-hand side, you rotate the wheel towards the dot by nine degrees. If the dot was on the left-hand side, I'd rotate the wheel towards the dot on the left-hand side. So I know I have a nine degree drift. Therefore, I rotate the wheel by nine degrees, taking me to 081. And I will notice that I now have an eight degree drift. So I just take that one degree off, put it back. So and it's still eight degrees. So if I head my aircraft 082 degrees, I will follow that track on my chart. Most importantly, where your dot has ended up here, we read our ground speed. The ground speed being 82, 84, 86, 87 knots. I now know my ground speed is 80, whoop, 87 knots. Now I know my ground speed, I can work everything else out. We can't tackle the problem until we know our ground speed. I turn the computer over. I gave you a brief instruction of the writing around the outside. The only time we ever use this writing around the outside is if we are converting from one unit to another. So I'm not using the writing because all I want to know, if I'm doing 87 knots, is how long it's going to take me to do 115 nautical miles. So what do I know? I know in one hour 
I do 87 nautical miles because that's what 87 knots means in one hour I will do 87 nautical miles again you are just a detective we just put the clues into the computer in one hour I do 87 knot, uh, knots which is the same as saying 87 nautical miles so I want to know how long it's going to take me to do 115 nautical miles this is showing me if in 80 in 60 minutes I do 87 nautical miles in 55 minutes I do 80 in 45 minutes I do 65 and I can just look around in, in round the computer so if in 60 minutes I do 87 nautical miles in 70 minutes I do just over a hundred this is 110 and this is 120 so I know 115 is here it's going to take me just under 80 minutes 79 minutes it's going to take and it's a good idea to work your way around the computer don't wear straight round because lots of students will look at that as being 115 well that's actually 115 so just go slow think what do i know in one hour i do 87 nautical miles 70 minutes i do just over 100 that's 110, so 115 is going to take me just under 80 minutes, 79 minutes, which is one hour and 19 minutes. Great, now I know what time I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there at 11.19. It's going to take me one hour and 19 minutes. If my aircraft burns, 13 US gallons in one hour how long is it going to take me to do one hour and 90 minutes again what do I know you're just a detective putting the clues into the computer I know that in one hour I burn 13 remember these are magic numbers on the outside I can make it anything I want it to be I know in one hour I burn 13 gallons in 70 minutes I'll burn just over 15 gallons and we've got 79 minutes 79 minutes there we go I'm going to burn actually 79 minutes I'm going to burn 17.1 US gallons fantastic I now know how much fuel I need I need 17.1 US gallons this obviously is not including reserves you put at least half an hour reserve on there I put an hour's reserve on there so I would like to know what 17.1 US gallons is in pounds with a specific gravity of 0.72 when we convert we use the outside again all I do is I think what do I know I know what do I know I know I use 17.1 US gallons you find US gallons on the outside and under the arrow there put in what you know I know I burn 17.1 oh, just trying to line it up 17.1 US gallons I want to know what that is in pounds if I just want to know what it was in pounds it's just over 111 pounds is 111 point something pounds but actually fuel is lighter than water water always sinks to the bottom of the fuel tanks when we do our fuel strainer checks we're actually taking it from the unusable fuel at the bottom of the tank fuel Avgas 100LL has a specific gravity of 0.72. We have specific gravity around the outside here. It doesn't say point, but this is 0.7, this is 0.75. So if I go to 0.72, I now read the inside. It says 10. 10.2. Well, actually, I know that this is about 6.6 .6 pounds to a gallon. So it's not 10.2. It's going to be... 102 I now know I need a hundred and two one hundred and two pounds
pounds of fuel. That's how easy converting is, converting anything. I may have, I mean, I'm an old fashioned girl. I don't think in, feet, in meters, I think in feet. If I'm told a runway, got meters at the top here, a runway 600 meters long, I think, oh, what's that in feet? I know there's about three feet to a meter, but I just go to feet, read the inside. I know it's not 20 feet, and I know it's not 200 feet. It's 2,000 feet, just under 2,000 feet, 1,900 um, and, I don't know, 80 feet. So you can use the outside for converting anything. So you can see the computer works everything out for you. I really hope that helps everybody. Happy flying.